This episode, The Cyclone Bomb, an HVAC retrospective. The great cyclone bomb of 2022 has come and gone, thank God. Uh, we thought, John and I, we thought we'd have a discussion about some of the things that we learned about heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems as a result of uber cold weather. Welcome to the Handyman Pros Radio Show, home improvement and maintenance tips from the pros. Thanks for listening to another edition of the Handyman Pros Radio Show, where our goal is to help save you time, money, and aggravation on your home maintenance and repair. This edition is entitled The Cyclone Bomb, an HVAC retrospective. <laughs> And as always, I'm here with my old buddy, Johnny. Johnny, did we learn anything? During yeah, was this, there anything uh, to talk about snap? over the last couple of days? Uh, it, this has been uh, this has been something else. And, it, and, and the I think the magic of this so-called cyclone bomb is that it, it hit the whole country, basically. I mean, there really was nobody that wasn't touched by really cold weather. Uh, did we ever confirm were there snow flurries in Miami? I, you said I, there might I don't have been know. I, I had heard I had heard that. Um, the yeah. other day, I think during the football game or something, but I, I don't, uh, I don't know. Um, I mean, it anyway, happened back in 77. I know that, but, uh, yeah. this was, uh, this was one for, uh, for the books. That's for sure. One for the books. What was the low at your house? Did you, did Seven. you get the low? Seven. Yeah. Same at ours too. Seven degrees, single digits in Atlanta, folks. That's pretty yeah. cold. Yeah. That was pretty cold. Pretty, pretty cold. And so. Um, it caused a whole host of problems, as you and I both know. We've been, both been busy with both personal and business uh, jobs in the past few days, um, basically fixing broken pipes. And uh, I had a heat an HVAC problem. I had a heating problem, um, which was really kind of a shocker. And we'll get into that in a, in a little bit of detail. But we thought we would start this thing off talking about HVAC systems, and then we'll do. We're actually going to have a second show, folks, on plumbing. So we're because this this is. Th- there are two kind of separate issues. One begets the other. We talk about heating first because heating, if your house stays warm, hopefully your plumbing stays warm and you don't get broken pipes and you don't get a flood, right? So plus heating is, is really more deadly. Um, both John and I grew up in cold climates and we know, you know, I, I don't know if I know anybody that died. I do know some people that got uh, uh, frostbite from being out in the cold for too long. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's really, really serious to lose your heating. Um, And so anyway, so we thought we'd talk about some of the things that you can do, can't do, you know, things to look out for, stuff like that. Does that that sound good, John? That sounds like a winner. I mean, it's been, this is, like I said, it's one for the books, man. Uh, This is, uh, you know, I I think there's a, there's, there's lessons learned here. Um, And, and, um, you know, repeated lessons, um, if you will. Yes. So, uh, and avoidable less. So I think I mean, there's some things that you can avoid, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think that's what we want to bring here to the, uh, to the listeners is, you know, Hey, here's a couple of things to be thinking about. And now it's what, it's only December, right? Yeah. It's still only December um, yeah. at the, at the time it's recording. So it, uh, you know, we've got a ways to go. And I know a lot of you folks up, up North have a, have a longer way to go than we do. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, kind of sucks to be you on that one, but, uh, <laughs> You know, so th- these are a couple of things that that I I try to be very cognizant of these things throughout the year. As we talk, we right. talk about this a lot. You know, you know, a lot the yep. seals around your door and this and that yep. and the other. Um, but uh, you know, this just reinforces this reinforces everything. And I will tell you that uh, that uh, I, I've seen a lot of plumbing trucks that I've never seen before running around this area. They're, they're Absolutely. everywhere. Um, you know, yep. my neighbor or my friend was saying that, uh, in his neighborhood that the water is just pouring down people's driveways since they're, they're out they're yep. on vacation. They're on, yeah, the timing on this one was absolutely <clears throat> horrific. It, it rolled in at least here in Atlanta, it rolled in what on Christmas Eve day, basically. Yep. And I mean, people were out of town. I, one of my neighbors was out of town. He actually had, it's a long story. We'll, uh, we'll, I mean, yeah, we'll it, get into the whole. Yeah, we'll get into it. I mean, it's just, but it's, it's really the timing sad. was horrible. Yeah, it's really sad. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've got some other stories here. Anyways, we did want to sure. talk about, um, you know, uh, furnaces and in, in, in HVAC and stuff like that, because, you know, you got to st- you got to keep warm, right? 
Yeah. And it all starts with what do they call it, Johnny? Thermodynamics. We don't want to get into a long discussion on science, but it's about differential, right? It's like how cold, how much differential are you trying to get? Are you trying to get, you know, 20 degrees warmer than outside, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees? It's all about differential. And so um, that's that's where we're, you know, that's just the basis for all yep. of this is trying to get trying to get different as much differential as efficiently as possible. And, you know, and, 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 uh, and this is the other t- side of it is that, you know, the the, the greater the the uh, the difference is right, the faster it transfers. So the faster when, it, when it gets cold outside, it comes, you know, that heat, your heat's going to escape. Real quick, heat heat yes. runs in the cold, man, as fast as it can, as fast as it can. So, uh, and the greater the differential, yep. the faster it goes. So, you know, you know, that's that's something to be thinking about. That's why um, you need to be probing around in your in your house, looking for on a cold day, looking for those leaks, because you will yes. find them easier on a cold day than you will any other. You know. Yeah, we we had that discussion before, and we really wanted to. We I wanted to bring out the fact that this, in some ways, is a blessing in disguise, right? Because at least here in the South, right, for us, our biggest expense on a on a monthly basis is not heating; it's cooling, right? Yeah. In the summertime, it's cooling, and it's really hard to find those. In my opinion, it's hard for me to find those leaks in the summertime because yeah, yeah. when the ninety degree air is coming in and it's seventy inside, I don't feel yeah, it exactly like I feel it when it's. Uh, 50 or it's, it's 70 inside and it's 16 outside right. and that cold air is blowing through, you know, and so it helps. It helped me in my own house and then in some of my rentals as well, identify where those cold spots are. So in a lot of ways, it's a blessing. Yeah. Right. But um, so you got to kind of look at it from from that perspective as well, too. It's really been a blessing. You found a spot. We'll talk about that probably in the next show because it's yeah. about plumbing. But you found a spot where you had a gaping hole yep. and, um, you know, and, and caused broken pipes, which is not good. But you didn't know it was there. Or did you? You no, really didn't, I didn't know, know it was there. there. Yeah, or you would have yeah. fixed it because you yep. would have been, you would have you would have taken our own advice and done all the things I, we're going to tell I, you to do. Yeah. In a minute. <clears throat> we'll get into that on the uh, on the next show. But um... yep, yep. So we th- kind of kind of wanted to run down heating units and and uh, just a just a, uh, these are overviews, folks. You either have gas, which is propane or natural gas, oil if you're up probably in the northeast, and then or you have electric. And you can have heat pump, baseboard, and radiant. And then there's others. There's steam heat. There's there's uh, uh, hot water pumping, plumbing. We're gonna we're gonna kind of not talk about those, but we we really just wanted to talk about. I wanted to make a couple of comments about these. So gas pro gas systems and oil systems can get huge differential, meaning you're just basically burning something inside a container, and they run hot air over it, and you can get what's the differential on that, John? You can get probably what 100 degrees differential. Oh, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. At, yeah, at least, yeah, you know, yeah. like 100 degrees um, differential, meaning the difference between the air temperature and the temperature inside the thing will be well, probably well over 100 degrees. That gives you a lot of flexibility as far as really in, in a really cold situation to transfer a whole lot of heat rapidly. Back to what John was saying, the, the hotter it is, the, the greater the differential, the faster that heat transfers, both heat and cold, too, by the way. This works two ways. So if you're cooling in the summer, it's the same thing. Um, I just wanted to mention heat pumps. So heat pumps, at least in our area, heat pumps are very, very common. They were struggling to keep up in this very, very cold weather because a heat pump's ability to generate differential, and I don't know the exact numbers. It depends on the age of the unit and a lot of other uh, factors as well. But, you know, 20 to 30 degrees is about average. Do you agree with that, John? Is it more than that? Um, it, it depends where you're, yeah, it depends where you're at. I'm not, I'm not a great big heat pump guy myself just because right. just because of that um but um you know it's basically an air conditioner in reverse right exactly um, so you know there i'm not going to get into all the theories and all that kind of stuff of it i no, mean i've studied these things like but i you know it's um you're right we, you know the, the the point here is that when it gets really cold outside they don't generate they don't generate heat like a like a furnace you know regular like gas a furnace. furnace or right you know so right. i think and this and the reason that that's important is i know in our area i, I was reading a lot of the facebook posts and the net next door posts and stuff like that and people were saying you know i i'm not getting any heat and you know my kind of my standard answer was well is it warmer than outside and they'd say well yes and i said it's running constantly isn't it and they'd say yes i said it's working i said the problem is is that it's never going to put out when it's 16 out it's never going to put out air that's warmer than 50 degrees yeah. it's just not yeah you know it's it's just not designed to do that yeah. so 
part of that is if you have that system, understand understand that. That's my point. I guess our point is is understand if you if you don't have a true furnace. When I refer to a furnace, I turn talk about something that burns something in a chamber. You know, be it gas, oil, whatever, even firewood. Right? If you're burning firewood, that's burning a mm -hmm. a, a, a fuel in a in a chamber, and it throws heat out the front, both radiant and or uh, thermal heat as well. So again, not we don't want to get into a long science experiment, but I just want people to understand if you have a heat pump. Um, that, you know, the reason it didn't feel warm is because it wasn't and, but it was warmer than outside is what it was. So with all of that, Johnny, what kind of things can you do to make your house be more efficient in the heating side? Like what are some of the things that I, Johnny, I got to say something. How long did you know this cyclone bomb was coming? <clears throat> we knew that this thing was coming for, oh God, I think I, I knew it was kind of funny. I looked, I looked a couple of weeks ago on the long range forecast and it predicted it right down to the day. I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. And then as we got closer to it without, within a week or two, um, you know, they started to talk about this thing. So we yes. all knew to answer your question, we all knew at least a week in advance. Yeah. So different question, yep. John, every fall, do we know it's going to get cold? We do. Yes, it's, it's called weather. Follows day. Yeah, it's called yeah. it's called climate. climate. And we, we know it's going to get cold in the fall. The reason that I bring this up is a lot of we have talked about these items multiple times. Yes, it's have. just become it, it, it just really shows the importance of doing your regular service. Do you agree oh, yeah. with that, John? Yep. Yep. That's and, yep. and the time to do that service is not when. Yeah, not uh, n not on a uh, seven degree day. Correct, you know, correct, right? So, John, we put out every year pretty much in the fall. What do we tell people to do? You know, insulate. <clears throat> well, we tell you check, turn your heat on, and make sure it works. Make sure, right? Well, you know, it, you folks out there, you know, you either maintaining your your units yourself, or you have somebody maintaining them for you. And it's really important to to know about those units. Yes, very much so. <laughs> you know, um, because if anything happens, you need to you need to understand how to fix it. We're going to talk about something in a couple of minutes here. Um, but um, you know, Larry, you and I were talking about yesterday. You know, the the people that listen to this show are interested in this kind of in 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 these things. Um, and I would encourage anybody to you know ever, just crack a book once in a while and, and learn about, you know, your appliances, not, not yeah. at a granular yep. level, just at a high level, how, you know, in general, the theory of how they work and stuff like that. Cause it's going to help you understand what, what might be going wrong and how to avoid it and things like that. Yep. Yep. And, and it's, and it's, yeah. And it's, you can get small, they're small articles. <laughs> I mean, they're small. that will give you all the basis for everything you need to know. I mean, less than a page, yep. you know, this is not, and, and we probably should put some of those resources up on our website. I guess we probably will. They, there's, there's plenty, there's just plenty of things to tell you all about, you know, how this just basically how this stuff works. And we just, it just really becomes important when, you know, particularly in these kinds of situations, but you just need, you know, th this is about regular service. So I always tell everybody, get your HVAC system regularly serviced. Do this long before before any of these kind of big events come in, you know, this one just happens to be severe, but we know every fall it's going to get cold. So we always check You and I both check our systems out here in Atlanta. We do it probably what I do mine in October because it's hardly ever colder enough to worry about heat. And, uh, in October, but when I lived up North, when I lived in Rochester, New York, um, we used to do it in uh, September because in September it started getting cold. Like you could have the heat come on in September. And that was probably true for you in, in Chicago as well. I'm assuming, um, yeah, June. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, I, you know, <clears throat> I, I look at when, when I, when I change my filters on my, yep. on my units, I always, I always look, I look around those things all the time. Yeah. I'm looking for, yeah. I'm looking for cracks. I'm looking, you know, in the, in the, in the heating elements and, and, you know, anything, I, everything, yeah. but you know, it's just. It's just something to stay on on top of, um, yeah. You know. And it only takes minutes, right? It's we're not talking about a huge commitment of time or money. And I think I think you can even hire somebody for about seventy bucks to come check your system out twice a year. Right. It's really not right. very expensive. Right. You know. Right. For those of you who don't want to do it, yeah, hire hire yeah. somebody to hire an HVAC guy to come out and do it. 
Yeah. Um, not, you know, not a big deal. So that's the first thing. Um, it, the second thing is, and we, you know, you, you just mentioned it, but is insulation, right? You know, does your home have insulation? Now, for those of you that live in colder climates, you probably have lots of insulation, but here in the, in the warmer climates, and, and particularly if you have older, older homes, homes that's what it older is. Older homes. Yep. Boy, really, it's probably older yeah. homes and old meaning, um, seventies, seventies and before. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Right. Um, like, for example, I, I have rental properties in a, in a small town in, in middle Georgia, you know, and honestly, no insulation. <laughs> in these homes. None. <laughs> and I, when I say no insulation, I mean zero, nothing above, nothing on the sides, nothing below, no insulation. Yeah. And, um, we, when we, when we redo them, we add insulation mostly for cooling, right. of course, but, but it does, but when it gets cold like this, then it's for heating. But it, see, this is the thing. It doesn't really matter. It has, you get both sides of the spectrum. You know, this is, it helps your cooling just as well as it helps your thing. So insulate. Um, again, we talked about it. One of the benefits of this cold weather is you, you, you're going to find those cold spots in your home and, um, uh, you know, because you can feel that cold air, you know, you can, and here's, it, it, yeah, it is. It, and here's another thing that occurs, uh, uh, just can't cross my mind is that, you know, folks, if you're, if you're not, um, going to do a DIY on, on some of this insulation, you know, if you walk around your house, you, you know, put a sticky note or make some notes or something where that, where the cold air is. And then, you know, if you hire somebody, uh, another handyman or whatever, to come out Whatever. and and just here's all the spots because like Larry's just saying it's easy to identify these things when it's when the differentials is is great, but it's hard to you know it's hard to find them when it when it's not. So if you yeah, do it yeah. now, then you know during the summer or the spring or whatever you know, then you can uh, you can find those spots and you you know where they're at and fix them. And that's yep. what I'm going to do because you know what I got a couple of doors that <laughs> I got a couple of doors that. You know, I I put new seals on, but I didn't put bottom seals on. You know, I'm not taking them off at seven degree weather. You know, seven seven degrees when it's outside, um, but I'm going to wait till spring and I'm going to take them off and put new seals on them. And put new seals yeah. on them, yeah, because it's cold enough. Yeah. And and actually, well, one of the, one of the Johnny, you probably did this, but this is kind of one of the tips I wanted to talk about earlier. If if you do find one of those cold spots like that under a door. If you take just a towel or any anything really, but just close that thing up. Oh, absolutely. You know, just put a door towel snakes, across you can buy the door bottom. Door snakes and all that stuff. Door snakes. Um, yeah, any of that stuff. But uh, close close the air gap off, and and that'll that'll add. I mean, it it helps. It certainly helps, especially when it's frigid. Oh, it really helps. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, so um, yeah, so that so you know, it, find those spots and insulate and give and and it's kind of a question of I mean, there's a cost there's a cost analysis you can do on insulation and stuff, but pretty much insulation is a is a no brainer for payoff, you yeah. know. And certainly, folks, if it stops a, a broken pipe and a flood, big time, uh, big, big savings, time. big savings, big savings. So that's 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 insulation. I mean, we don't want to beat into it too much more than that. Let's we were we just talked about a tip to help keep your whole your your home warmer, you know, in an actual event, right? One was to to just put a door snake or a towel or anything yep. up under the bottom of the door that's running. One of the things I guess kind of to put it into a bigger perspective is you want to close up the outside of your home, right? So, and you all and you want to open the interior door. So you want the heat that comes into your house to spread out through your house as much as possible, and conversely, you don't want the heat the cold air from the outside coming in. So with that, open your interior doors, right, John? Get some air flowing. Get your, you can turn, if you have ceiling fans, turn them on. Now make sure that they're flowing the right way. You don't want the air pushing down. You want it drawing up. Remember, there's a switch on the side of that fan and you're supposed to, in the wintertime, it's supposed to be drawing up and instead of pushing air down. So have it, you can do that. Um, what else can you do, John? You know, one of the things that um, that you know we were talking about this is, to, um, and it, it also occurred to me is that you know when you're when you're in a in a cold snap like this, you know, keep your cabinet doors open around the plumbing. Yes. yes. So that goes back to your you know leave your doors open so air circulates through there. Um, that's going to stop a lot of my plumbing for that. You know, all all my kitchen stuff and all that is is kind of in the middle of my house. Um, yep. But all you folks that are on the on the outside or the 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 wall of your house that's on the outside you know that's a he you need to be really careful of that 
Yeah, we'll talk a yeah. lot about that in the next show yep. on the plumbing side of it, on like understanding where your plumbing actually runs and things like that. <clears throat> um, but yeah, keeping your cabinet doors open if you have outside wall plumbing is really important to do that. Really, really important because you'll get those, I call them microclimates, right? Yep. You'll get a microclimate where it, you'll open those cabinets and you'll put your <laughs> hand in there and you're like, whoa, it's cold yep. in there, you know? Yep, absolutely. And, and it's like surprise, surprise, you know, and you just don't, you don't, that can give, give you enough differential that the temperature can below, fall below 32 and stay there. You so, know what I, I did, I did as well as, um, I, I was telling you, Larry, that I, um, you know, one of my closets has a door that goes out to the attic and, and yep. that, that one of those little, it's a little door you got to yep. crawl through that thing. But, um, you know, I want to just seal that whole thing up. I just went over to uh to one of the big box stores and i bought a four by eight sheet a three quarter inch uh, foam board i think it was like oh it was on clearance for like 12 bucks and, you stole that but and, that's beside and the i point. and i just cut it and i just put it up against that door you know and just you know you don't even see it in the closet and it just stopped right. all of that and i because yeah. i i was getting yeah. prepared for this for like two weeks i'm like yeah i'm not if it's going to get that cold i am not going through this yeah, and I do want to mention that too. I I I had been preparing for a week, uh, the the good a good week before this. And when I say that, what I do, I'm in the middle of a remodel and blah blah blah. And so we've got uh, exposed pipes that actually have water in them. It's a long story, but it's how I I live in my camper when I do this stuff. And lo and behold, I have water hooked up to the camper. So, but but I had to. Uh, I actually went and bought pipe insulation and insulated my water pipes because it's one of the other ways to actually. Uh, stop, you know, frozen pipes. But I did all that a week before the event. And for whatever reason, I happened to be in Home Depot the day, like the, the Friday before. Yeah, it was the, it was the, the big cold came in on Saturday morning and I was there Friday afternoon late. And I, I, I was just chatting up a, the guy, one of the guys there and he's like, yeah, we don't have any more faucet covers right. and there isn't a, there isn't a stick of pipe insulation right. in this place. He said it all got bought like today. Yep. It went away. And so if you know this stuff's com point is, if you know this stuff's coming, yeah. you're not going to run into supply side <sighs> problems where these stores just get bombarded with people who wait to yeah. the last moment. So you know, yeah, let's we're, in, the, in the next uh, in, in the next installment of this ep of this uh, topic, uh, we're going to talk about that. I got some I got some stories about that. Yeah, I've got um, stories too. But you know, back back to this, I think there's a couple a couple of points here. Um, Larry, you've got a new, you know, uh, what well, we're, we're going to say, um, here that, um, you know, close your curtains, um, and close your face curtains. The sun. I do the same thing. If the sun's streaming right. in, Hey man, I'll take it. <laughs> You'll take it. <laughs> I'll right. Ta exactly. I'll take it, you know? Um, but otherwise closing the curtains acts like a yeah, layer of insulation. Exactly. It creates a microclimate between the door, between the window and the curtains. Yep. And you can put your hand in there and feel the difference yep. in temperature. Yeah, if you don't believe me, do it on absolutely. a cold day. And that's just a little trick, but it it's something. Right. It works, right? right? Um, same thing. We talked about gaps under the doors. Here's one. This is real common here, and I and not people that live in the north. I think a little less so. But folks, if you have a basement or a crawl space, you need to get under your house and close your vents. There are vents under there, and in the summer you want them open because you want airflow through there to keep the moisture out. But in the wintertime, <laughs> you don't want that 4 by 6 or It's not even 4 by 6 They're bigger than that. They're 12 by 6 yeah. I think. Yep. You don't want that giant hole in the side of your foundation. Close those. They're made to close. Almost all of them have a slide on them, and you can slide them closed. Close them when it's going to be cold like this. Close yep. them because it'll save, it yep. saves you money, but it'll save so, everything else. Yeah. So, so – Larry, you, you, one of the things I, I do want to I do want to bring up here before this episode ends is that um, there's a there's new there's new H there's new HVAC systems on the market, new furnaces, and these are yes. the very they're the high efficiency furnaces like the 95, 90 percent I can't remember exactly the percentage ninety two percent to whatever, and they have a and they actually create condensation in there because they're so efficient. And I think they run through a couple of different things. And you've got one, right? I, I found this and, a very and, interesting and, thing out. Yeah, yes. go ahead with that story. Because a lot of folks out there now, if you've had your furnace replaced in the last, you know, five years or so, you might have you might have the same thing. And, and Larry's got a story here that, uh, that yeah. didn't occur to me, but it, make, it does make sense. 
Yeah, this this is a personal story from my own house. So we so uh, here we are. It's uh, Saturday night, right? And uh, it's I I I am I get up just basically to go to the bathroom, and I hear my condensation pump running nonstop. You know, right? You know, like, and I'm like, why is the condensation pump running? And I'm like, it was two thirty or three o'clock in the morning or something. I'm like, I'm not dealing with this right now. I'm going back to bed. So I went over and opened the closet and pulled the plug on it, right? Just unplugged it because <laughs> I was didn't want to burn the thing out, right? Because it would burn out. And I figured it was because the exit was actually um, frozen. You know, I figured that the water was freezing. But I was trying to figure out why this thing was actually dumping water or why there was water in it in the first place. At first, I thought I have a, a dehumidifier, and I thought my dehumidifier, I have this, the same thing. I have a pump on the dehumidifier, and it's gotten to where it's run constantly. And anyway, long story short, so I just unplugged it, you know, went back to sleep. The heat ran, and about 6 o'clock in the morning, you know, we're, we're, the heat comes on, everything's fine. We have an, an Echo B thermostat, and it's reading everything's fine, everything's fine. About 7.30, I notice it's starting to get a little chilly downstairs. This is in the downstairs portion of my house. It's getting a little chilly. I go over to the thermostat, and it's off. And I am like, yeah. you've got to be kidding me. Like, th this is a propane heater, a propane furnace, right? So propane, you know, you're, th this is my go-to. I shouldn't have any issues with a propane heater. And I'm like, what yeah. the, right? WTF, basically. And I thought it was the Echo B. I I'm like, you know, this thing is too complicated, blah, blah, blah. This thing's screwed up. Well, long story short, we get, we get, we do a tiny bit of research and we find out that what actually happened was is that my shutoff switch in my, um, my pump had come on and as an anti-flooding uh, yep yep just fact it shut the pump yep, off just well that shut the thermostat off yeah. now i didn't i didn't at the time i didn't know that but within about two minutes i realized that well, that's I because then took the thermostat my, was powered on the common net you know common line on the, so anyways so so anyway the quick fix for me was I took a pan, I poured my condensate <laughs> water into, by the way, if you do that, make sure it's a pan you don't ever want to eat out of again because the dust and junk oh, that's in yeah. the bottom of your condensate pump is gross. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I pour the water out, thing comes back on, everything goes back to hunky-dory working fine. Um, long story short, you know, a couple days later after it thawed out, the pump went back to pumping the water outside. What actually happened is the exit the exit pipe had frozen. It's just a vinyl, yeah. you know, it's that little vinyl yeah. pipe. Yeah. And it had just frozen. It filled up with water and froze, you know. It, it was it, it's, it just, it's and exactly it, and it the same the thing, water folks, as, you as your, uh, you know, as your air conditioner. You, your air conditioner yes. creates uh, condensate water. and you pump it out if it's not draining out by itself. But that, but that pipe, um, you know, in the summertime, right? It's not going to freeze. <laughs> it doesn't freeze. So, but and but, I, but when you're using these new the, high the... efficiency things, they, they create condensate because of the exhaust, and when it mixes with the oxygen, it creates water, and it's got to get out of there. And now, now you've added the, this freezing temperature, and I will tell you that around here, I see these things just laying out onto the ground. They're not, they're, yes. it, you know, just, they're thrown, it, it run through the house and just thrown out on the, on the ground somewhere, you know, where it just, when the pump, pump comes on, just pumps the water out, you know, someplace, you know, onto your grass right or ground. whatever. Yeah. Um, right. But I can see where uh, I, I'm, when I'm reading about all this stuff, about how people are having a, a big issue with this, you know, that they're, that they're, their new furnaces are, are uh, uh, not working. And I'll bet that most of those HVAC guys and, and the, the repair guys are saying, hey, you know, the first thing is, you know, you probably froze up the condensate pump line. Yeah, well, yeah, or, or it's just full of water, you know, figure out a way to, yep. to either pump it into a bucket or, or whatever. There's a whole bunch of series of ways to fix it. The bottom line is understand what you've got. My simple solution was I didn't want to cut the line and have to rerun the line and all that stuff. So I was just like, I'll just dump it into a bucket right. you know it, it was just as easy i could do that because of my of the situation you know if if the thing was really buried and you had a hard time you might have had to cut your line and run it into a bucket and just let it pump itself out and then it, it come back to work and you know um and i suppose in northern climates i was going to say in, in northern climates they probably run those drain lines into a, an actual interior drain where it just goes into your sewer or septic system i don't know for sure but here in the south, they yeah, they just run them outside. Mine just mine runs out into a piece of PVC pipe, yep. into a piece of one inch PVC pipe that runs it out into the lawn, and I get free water yep. in the summer. I get free 
water in the lawn. So it's great in the summertime. But this was this was kind of a black swan, yeah. not kind of. This was a black swan event, and. I honestly, John, until it happened, I didn't realize that my that my furnace put off that much water. Yeah, you it'll know? it'll put off gallons of water a day. Um, it was a it, lot. Yeah, it's, it's it was gallons. gallons. It's probably it was six lot. gallons a day. Um, yeah. You know, uh, of the furnace. Uh, but um, you know, folks, back to my point earlier is that you know, folks that listen to this show, you know, you're you're interested in these kind of things, and and you know, you should educate yourself on on these new kind of uh, appliances and 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 units that you have. So that if anything like this does happen, that, you know, you can, you know, at least go through maybe a couple of high level, you know, check a little checklist of, you know, something that you can do yourself. Yes. And, and yeah, save well, yourself, and, and because I will tell you that back to your point earlier, you know, this happened at one of the worst times, right? Right during Christmas. And if you're going to try to f- get anybody out there to fix something, uh, good luck with that. Well, I was just going to say, here's the corollary of the story. So my wife, because this this uh, furnace is less than six months old, okay? So my wife calls the HVAC company that installed it, right? You know, blah, blah, blah. She calls it 8 o'clock in the morning, roughly, 8 o'clock in the morning. When do you think they called us back, John? Oh. The ha- 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, that's probably that's probably okay. about right. I mean, I can't. And it, and it was the owner of the company. Well, it was the owner's, but it was a husband wife team that owns a company and they've got multiple trucks. This isn't a small company. You know, they've got about five or six trucks, I think something like that, but it's not a one person operation. Right. And I'm just telling the story because, you know, and my wife tells the, tells her the, the woman on the other end of the line says, yeah, my husband, you know, he's a handyman. He fixed it out. She goes, he's a handyman. Uh, does he want to work the rest of the day? Cause I've got 48 service calls in the next hour. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, she had been on the phone since eight o'clock in the morning, and we were the. She didn't get to our phone call yeah. until two in the yeah, afternoon. Yeah, that, and that's and and I I can imagine I can imagine. Yeah. Well, yeah. Larry, <clears throat> anything else? <laughs> I um, mean, we beat yeah, this one so up pretty of, good. So the the other thing is just you know just I know it seems simple, but make sure that your thermostat works. You know, just check it. Well, Whatever it kind of thermostat our, you have. You know, what we always say: check your batteries in it. I get it. You know, I get it. So, Johnny, you know what? The spaceship landed. Do you look at it or do you take it apart? Take it apart, man. Take <clears> it <throat> apart, baby. Folks, if you've enjoyed the Handyman <laughs> Pros Radio Show, we hope we're giving you some value here. Questions, comments, or concerns, questions at Handyman Pros Radio Show. Check out our website, Handyman Shows Radio, Handyman Pros Radio Show.com. We've got a newsletter sign up. We are going to start publishing newsletters, John. I've decided. Facebook groups at Handyman Pros. We appreciate you listening. Please tell your friends and neighbors. Send them the link. If, we've, if you've got any questions, send us a note. We appreciate it, and we'll talk to you soon. We'll see you next week on the Handyman Pros Radio Show. Mm-hmm.